Well, hi there, everybody. Uh, here I am again. This is going to be lecture 12. And uh, the point of this lecture is going to be, let's suppose you want to do your uh, project where you're adding sound to the traffic light. Let's suppose you want to do the sound with musical notes, like A, B, C, that sort of thing. So uh, one disclaimer, though, is, you know, if you haven't had any musical training, this lecture isn't going to make any sense. Um, and let me give you a real clear example of that. Uh, right here is the music for, um, it's actually the alto horn music for, uh, piece for Martin Luther's Almighty Fortress is Our God. If you can look at this and read it, then this lecture is going to make sense. If you look at that and say, what is this, then I would stop here and, and move on, go to the next lecture. There is no requirement for the homework to do it with notes. You can just do it strictly as frequencies and not worry about any of this. But I know several of you have had musical training. And so in this lecture, I'm going to show you one way you can do, you can, you know, make, take sheet music like this and turn it into a tone on the, on the Arduino. So the first thing is you're going to need to get this file pitches.h. Uh, if you Google Arduino pitches.h, you'll find it. Typically, it's not a file. It just it just shows the content. So you're going to copy it and paste it in. If you want to put it in a second separate file, maybe called pitches.h, that's good. You can also just take the content and paste it at the top of your Arduino file. Either one will work. Anyway, what it is is just a bunch of definitions. So it's <clears throat> a pound to find. So what this is saying, for instance, is that the E in the second octave is 82 hertz and the F in the sec second octave is 87 hertz and the F sharp in the second octave is 93 hertz and, and so on. It's just all the way there from octave 2 to, to octave, I think it's 8. And uh, one thing that's important to know, and this I made an error in the class when I talked about this, is the octave numbering goes C to B. So it's like octave 2 is C, then D, then E, then F, then G, then A, then B. From B to C, it goes to the next octave. So A4 is a whole step above G4, um, where in the class I thought that's where it wrapped. It's not. And then as an example, C3 is a half step above B2. So that's important. And, you know, if you look at the file, you can see that pretty clearly. So here's some excerpts from pitches.h. And here they're shown in two columns. In pitches.h, it's just one column. I just was conserving space on the PowerPoint slide. But, you know, you see there on the left side, you know, G sharp uh, in the second octave is 104 hertz. A sharp in the second of octave is just a half step above that. So the wraparound is from, you know, uh, like I say, from from B um, to C. That's where it goes from two to three in this case. Um, note also pitches.h does not have sharps. It has sharps. It doesn't have the flats. So you'll see a2 is a in the second octave. as2 is a sharp in the second octave. And b2 is b in the second octave. So if you want to have a flat in there, you know, you can write your song using only sharps because, you know, um, a sharp is the same as B flat, but you and I both know that eh, that's not quite how music works. You know, if you're thinking flats, so you want to keep thinking that. So you can either do it sharps, or what you can do is add labels for flats. All right, so in pitches.h, what you could do, or in your file, you would, you would just add them. So for the second octave, you would add D flat, which is defined as C sharp. You'd add E flat, which is D sharp. You'd have GF2, which is the same as FS2. G flat's the same as F sharp. You'd have A flat 2, which is the same as G sharp 2. And you'd have B flat 2, which is the same as A sharp 2. And you'd do this for all the octaves. I think I think the pitches.h goes from octave 2 to octave 8. Um, at any rate, so in terms of writing the song out, there really are several ways you can do it. I'm going to show you a way that I think is is probably the simplest. Uh, don't want to get into more complex data structures. I, you know, this class assumes you've had only a little bit of programming. So I'm going to show you a way using some function calls. 
Uh, if you're a more advanced programmer, usually probably having an array-based approach is better, but, but this will certainly work and kind of get you from here to there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a series of constants. So what this first one is, is how long is an eighth note. So I'm going to say, and this is milliseconds, so I'm going to say an eighth note is 250 milliseconds. And then you see there for quarter, I'm going to say, well, okay, you know, quarter notes, twice an eighth note, a half note is four times an eighth note, a whole note's eight times an eighth note. And then we're going to have something called separate, separate. And what the idea is, you know, if, if notes are slurred, there's no separation. But if they're not slurred, you got to have a little pause, right? So the 50 is, is the pause. Um, and what it is here in your, in your code, you would have, you know, the pound defines the things in the bullet points. You know, those would be just um, uh, your, um, you know, those are just comments explaining what they are. And with this scheme, you know, change tempo, all you got to do is change the value of eighth. So previously I had it at 250. If you change it to 200, everything proportional would be faster. Probably if you're changing the, the, if you're increasing the tempo much, you might have to reduce separate a little bit too because the, the pauses will seem a little bit big. But by adjusting those two parameters, you can speed it up and slow it down. So I did it this way. I wrote a function called eighth, which is an eighth note. You pass it the frequency. And look what we do. We call tone and we say buzz pin. That's the pin. And I say the frequency. And then I delay and I take the length of an eighth note and I subtract off the separate value. And then I say no tone and then I delay separate value. So that'll maintain the tempo, but it'll give you a little gap at the end. And then for eighth underscore slur, that's if they're slurred. Well, then it's the same, but you don't have the no tone. So you, you what you do is you go, the, the delay is the full eighth note delay. And I'm going to move through this quickly, but I'm assuming you'll kind of look at it and stop and, and think about it a little bit. For quarter note, it's pretty much the same deal. Um, you know, you, you hit the tone for the frequency, you delay for quarter minus the separate portion, and then you do no tone and you wait for separate. If it's slurred, so you're at an E and you want to slur up to an F, you would say, you know, you would say quarter slur for the E and then quarter for the F. So the slur is just not having the no tone part. For half note here, um, same structure. You know, we, we start the tone, we wait for the time, the length of a half note minus the separation, then we do no tone. And what I did is a dotted half note here is what this half dot is. So that's the same structure, but instead of delaying for half, it's half plus a quarter because that's what a dotted half note is. And if you wanted a dot or quarter note, you know, you would you would add the same sort of thing or a dotted eighth note. I mean, I'm sort of giving you a general structure, and as you, you know, uh, add use more and more complexities of music, you, you're going to add more functions like this. For a whole note, you know, it's the same structure. Set up the frequency, wait whole minus the separate and then, um, you know, no tone and wait. And, you know, if you wanted the slur, you would use the format like we had analogous on, you know, eighth note and quarter notes. For the rests, I said, well, a quarter rest is just going to be no tone and delay a quarter. Half rest is no tone and delay a half. You know, if you wanted to do a whole rest, you do delay a half or an eighth rest. You know, the same format would apply. And then here we go in the sheet music I have, the, the music, you know, the, this is one of these things you play along with, you know, so I've got the alto horn part here, which is the same as alto sax. Alto horn is kind of like a little baby baritone horn. It's a low brass, it's kind of the highest of the low brass. And, um, yeah, you, you know, so the piano is doing stuff on the first, uh, four, first three measures. But starting on the fourth beat there, you see I say I have note A4 for the quarter note. And then in measure four, I've got an, an A and an A, and then I slur E, F sharp, and then a G sharp. See how that works? See, you know, and then measure five, it's going to be a slur. That's a, uh, an A, and then it slurs down to a G sharp, and then it goes to an F sharp, and then it goes to an E. 
And I pretty much do this through the whole thing. We have a quarter note of rest, and then we have an A down to a G sharp, down to an F sharp. Now notice I don't have any provision for those accents over the, you know, over the, the quarter notes there. But measure seven, you know, I've got an E, and then I got an F sharp as a quarter note, and then I slur. I have a D going down to a C sharp, and then you notice the slurs on the first part because it's after the D. That's where I slur it, and then the C is regular, and then the B, and then to measure eight, I have a half note uh, of an A, and then I have a half measure of rest. And then in measure nine, we have a half rest and a quarter rest, and then I have the note A4, measure 10, A4, A4, and then I have a slur, E4 slur as an eighth note, slurring up to F sharp, and then I have G, measure 11. I got a slur again, I got an eighth note, an A, an A and then an eighth note for G sharp, and then quarter note for F sharp, and then a half note for E. And I don't know that I need to walk you through all these, but at this point you see what I'm doing, and you see that I took my pencil and wrote in the you know the measure number. But you can go through these one at a time, and you know, and, and see exactly what I did. And you know, so here's measures 15 through 17, and you know, you can stop it and, and look and see and everything. And what I'll do is I'll put this lecture uh, without the notes on. Um, I'll, I'll put this up in uh, uh, Canvas so you can can get to it. And then again, there's measures 18 through 20 and 21 through 23. And uh, there's 24 through 26. And that 26, you see, I do the half dot there, the dotted half note. And I think that's it. Yeah. So, at any rate, you know, this approach does not allow for volume changes. So, you know, I don't have forte and for double forte and pianissimo and all that stuff. I, I don't allow for accents. But, you know, it's a simple buzzer, and this is about all you can do with a buzzer. Here's the, how it sounds. At any rate, so so that's what I've done. That that's a way to do it. There are of course lots of ways to do it, but this seemed like uh, like a pretty good way to do it. At any rate, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.